G'day everyone, uh, Ken from down here in Australia and today I thought I'd just take you through what I personally do uh, getting my images from RAW inside the camera um, to being processed and ready to share with even you guys uh, on our page um, so I'm just going to take you through the steps I, I do I know everyone's different um, and um, the programs that I use and some of those you might find useful so firstly uh, I take the card out of the camera and put that in the card reader and get my images from there I know a lot of people do different they might connect the actual camera to uh, the computer with a cable I use the card take it straight out um, and then when the images are off the card I can just put the card back in the camera format it get it ready to go for the next time I go out so I don't use Explorer or File Explorer to uh, to look at my images um, because sometimes you we all know if we've got a folder full of uh, large files that take a long time to load. I use uh, a program called Faststone Image Viewer, which is this one just here. It's a free program um, and uh, it's instantaneous when you open up your files. So I'm looking for my card now. Uh, it's not in there. It'll be here. Okay, so let's say these are the images that I took today. First step is for me to have a look at them, work out which ones I'm going to keep and uh, which ones I'm not. So we have a look through. That one's not too bad. I'll probably keep that one. That one's not bad. Bit of a silhouette there, the fisherman. That's much the same as the last one, so I'm not going to keep that one. So what I do is I mark this one up with a Q, hold down the Q button on the keyboard, the Q, uh, and it adds a marker to that image. Go to the next one. Let's say that's a crap one. We don't want that one. So again, Q on the keyboard marks it up here as a, uh, as a marked image. Uh, these are the lighthouse ones I took. That one isn't too bad, I don't think. I think I can keep that. In between the two. I like that one because, I think, because it's got the light coming out on the cloud. So I might keep that. What's the next one? That one's not too bad. That one's a bit lighter um, and hasn't quite got the same effect, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Oop. Q. That's much the same. That's starting to get a bit of colour in the cloud behind it. Now it's a bit closer. I'm going to keep that. Um, and that's now got the lattice from the fence line shining on it, so I'm going to keep that one. Between the two, much of a muchness. That one's got a bit of light from the light in it. I might keep that one. So I've been that one, keep that one. It's a bit stronger light, might keep that one. And that's it. So escape. Back to our images, and you'll see some are marked and some aren't. So to get rid of the marked one straight up. I press the red marker up the top here. They're the four or three that I said that I'm not going to keep. So shift and highlight the whole lot. Right click. Or if you don't even have to right click. So shift, highlight the whole lot and delete. They're gone off the card. Untake the filter off. These are the ones I'm going to keep now. So what I'm going to do is highlight them all and uh, we're going to move them to a folder uh, and I'm going to put them in this folder so I don't mess it up because I've already got them in another folder so I just move them into the folder that I'm going to use right so move yep let's create it and it's moved into that folder um, on my desktop now 
navigate my way to that uh, folder on the desktop okay so we're in the folder where our images were put um, and for the purposes of the exercise today I think that's the one we'll use that one just to practice with today all right so the next thing I do uh, is open up the next program uh, and it's DxO pure raw DxO pure raw this is what I uh, process all my raw files in okay so you can open them up as like a normal file explorer or drop and drag I use Fastone again um, and that's the one that we were going to use so we'll open it up drop it in um, and I simply use a default here I don't change too much uh, in the settings in here well, I haven't changed too much so I'm just going to process that photo okay so you get a couple options now um, you can view the results or export it to wherever you want to export it let's have a bit of a look at it so old raw sorry the raw raw on the left and uh, the DxO uh, adjusted raw on the right so that's what the old one looks like and that's what the new one looks like um, it does take uh, noise out as well so it's pretty good at taking some noise out before we even get into Lightroom so there it is that's uh, that's ready to go right click and export to application 99.9% .9 of my photos I process through Photoshop um, unless I've got I'm doing a big batch 50 or so photos I don't bother with Lightroom um, because most of the time you go into Lightroom you'll export out the Photoshop to do some stuff and then you'll bring it back into Lightroom and you'll finish off and then you'll export out of uh, out of Lightroom um, it's good for cataloging yes but uh, I don't bother with it too much um, I bring my photos in here process them the 10 that I'm keeping from the morning or whatever drop them in here um, and then one at a time export them out to Photoshop ready to go once you hit the export button it'll put it in Adobe Raw so here we are in Adobe Raw I don't do much in Adobe Raw whatsoever now I apply a profile um, we're doing landscape so let's put a landscape profile on um, and it's already started to lighten it up a little bit use whatever preset you want to use if you so desire but uh, yeah I use uh, uh, camera landscape temperature what I do do is just take a bit of temperature out of the white balance um, it's subjective and it's only a little bit and I'll take a little bit out um, and then later on when I'm adjusting the colors in the in the image um, you'll get blue or blues and greener greens with a little less temperature in the white balance so that's all I do knock a bit of that out don't touch much of the exposure shadows anything like that unless I'm trying to save a photo that I've way underexposed or overexposed um, and I'm trying to do a hero save on it I don't touch those sliders at all hardly you can use a bit of clarity a bit of dehaze if you want to but I'm going to probably sharpen it up in uh, in Lightroom sorry in uh, in Photoshop um, and the only other thing I would check here is to make sure that my optics that I've ticked off uh, use the um, profile corrections um, and uh, and that's about all I do in there that's done then open and I'll drop it straight into Photoshop here we are in Photoshop um, probably the very first thing I will do is uh, I'll crop there's not much to crop on this one um, in actual fact it's pretty close I'll use the original ratio on this I might just I'd like to keep as much of that sky as possible so I might just take it in there a little bit that's pretty good okay so that's pretty good I'm going to keep it like that um, I might run it through let's have a look 
Uh, it's pretty good. I mightn't even worry about it. Let's fit it on screen. I might just put a filter on it just for the sake of it today to show you guys what I do. I use uh, Topaz Denoise. Um, it's a standalone, but I've got it as a uh, as an add-in here. Take the photo into there, do whatever I need to do with it, and bring it back out again. There's not a lot of noise in this, but we're going to do it as a uh, as an activity. All right. So yes, it was low light, but I was not using a high ISO. I was probably using about 100 ISO because I was on a tripod. Um, so we might just do standard today and apply that. So once it's finished processing, it'll drop it straight back into, into uh, Photoshop again. So that's us. We're done with that. So what else do I want to do? What else do I want to clean up? Um, I tell you what, this antenna here drives me nuts. Beautiful lighthouse, and it's got a microwave telephone communications thing on the side of it. So we're going to clone that. So let's go in. Let me see what we're going to do. Right, yep, we're going to get rid of that. So to make things really easy, so then if you make a mistake, you don't have to go back, go back, go back, and undo, undo, undo. Um, I take the layer down here on the right, drop it on the plus, which clones it, and then work on the clone copy. And then if I stuffed up what I'm doing here, um, I just delete that layer, that copy layer, and um, and start again. Clone tool, there's a stamp, that's that one there. That's probably about not a bad size. We might go up a bit higher. Yeah, okay. Um, and we want 100% opacity. So find the area you want to clone, which is about over here somewhere. Um, Alt, right, uh, left click to mark the area that we want to use as a clone. And then all we do is just paint down. And I do a little bit from each side. So then we don't take too much from one way or the other. We'll get rid of that one first. Now this will look a bit stripy here in a minute, but we can be we can fix all this up. Okay, so I don't think these poles here are going to be too much of a hassle if we leave them there. So we're just going to tidy up the end and no one will even notice that they're on the balcony. So um, it just looks like part of the infrastructure. So I'll go down to a smaller brush. So I've got a smaller brush here um, and we'll just tidy up the ends here. Get rid of those cables there. And we'll just taking a bit of that out all right so if we go back now and have a look at that well sorry back to there bit on screen we've lost that now just to tidy that up just a little bit go back to clone brush a big brush big brush size about that um, and we'll take the opacity down this time. We'll take it down to in the 40s. That's all right. And pick up a bit of that there. And that'll just blend. Just not hard edges, but just blend it in a little bit. And that'll do us. That's got rid of that. So before, oh sorry, after. And we'll switch it off. Before looks much better without that mask in there. So that's that's got that done. We could clean up some patches on the grass here, maybe. We really wanted to make it look really special. We can do that, but we're probably not going to worry too much about that. So that's pretty good. 
So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is our levels. Um, there's our histogram there. You can see uh, we didn't get quite over to the right there. So we're going to try to tighten up that histogram just a bit. If we move the highlight slider across, we can't really see what we're doing until we've got it too far. You can see now those clouds are blown right out. We can't really see what we're doing. So take it back over to the side. If we hold down um, the Alt key, when we move that slider, there we go. So um, we can see the adjustments we make as we do the slider now. So up on the top right hand corner, there's a bit of the sky starting to come in. There's the pinks. We haven't really, or well, the reds, we haven't really blown out a lot of stuff. Now we're starting to get a bit too much lightness in there. So we just back it off a tad and over on the left. Again, the sky is starting to go a bit. Maybe if we just take it off a tick more. That's pretty good. That looks pretty good for this time being. That's pretty good. We've lightened it up. So now the darks, um, there's not a lot of movement here. As we can see, our uh, slider's right off to the left already. This time, when you press your Alt key, we get a white screen. We start to move that slider, and when we start to put too much dark in and too many shadows in, um, you'll see it'll start to show up on the white. So we back that off. We don't want to lose too much detail. There's a little bit of detail there. We've moved the slider in a little bit, and that's not too bad. Let's leave it at that. Looks pretty good. You could bring it up for mid-tones. Again, the mid-tone slider, you don't slider, you don't need to uh, touch the alt key or anything for this. You just move it up and get a bit more light into it. That's not too bad. Let's leave it at that. So again, let's look at what we've done. Turn it off to there. We've picked the, picked the brightness up again. All right, our S curve. In the moment, it's a pretty straight curve. So the whole idea is to get the highlights and the low and the and the uh, the shadows. So around about along this line here, around about here is sort of the bulk of our highlights. So we'll pick it up from there and bring it up just a bit. We don't need to bring it up too much. Just a bit. Just a bit. We've got a little gentle curve in there and down right down the bottom is where most of our shadows are so let's drop that down a little bit and that gives us some contrast that's pretty good so again if we have a look it's a nice gentle s curve turn that off and it's picked pick the brightness of the, the uh, image up a bit and give us a bit better contrast about the last thing I would do with this uh, is a bit of vibrance, um, make it a bit uh, more colourful. So we can add some hue, um, whichever way the slider you want to have a look at. And I think we'll probably go right here, which will pick up the green in the grass and turn the sky a pale blue. We don't want to go too far, just a little bit. That's not too bad. We went the other way. We got that. That looks uh, terrible. So we'll just go up. We were about 10 plus 10. Maybe. Let's give us some nice greener grass. That's pretty good. Um, and some saturation. So now slide up the saturation to bring up those colors. Um, don't take them too far. It looks too artificial. So that looks bloody horrible and that's washed out so we're probably and this is about 20 you get away with about 20 not 30 ish plus 30 ish that's okay maybe a little bit less just depends on what your tastes are all right again subjective uh, and that's all i would do with this photo that's it, I'm done. Um, then export. 
where are we export export as that's two and a bit uh, meg nearly three meg if we go up too high quality we're nearly eight meg and that's too much to load to Instagram and Facebook if that's where you're going to display them um, so I drop the quality back down to six take it down to about two seven or so um, export to a file it's just a file at the top let's go lighthouse save it that's it as a JPEG ready to go this image now you could save as a PSD file all right so that's a PSD file that means that you can come back in open it back up and everything we've done here now over here all the cropping all the rest of it um, is sitting here as we are now so it'll open the, the image up the raw image back up and it'll apply everything um, that PSD is like a recipe and it'll put that recipe back over the top of the image again um, we can change one or all of these things we didn't like the crop then we can fix the crop up as you can see the crop's still there um, and we can change the crop again whatever you wanted to do so we don't want to crop it um, and I'm not going to save as a PSD file for the activity today so I'm going to close out nope close that and let's go to the uh, the file and have a look at our finished product there it is there's the uh, the image that we've just done there didn't take too long a few little tricks and uh, and that just to uh, tidy it up a bit um, all in Photoshop nothing strenuous nothing really hard about doing it um, and that's why I use Photoshop for as I said about 99.9% .9 of my uh, photos so I import from a card I use Faststone viewer um, to view the view and move the photos around DxO Pure Raw is my raw processor um, it comes in to Adobe Raw from there I do not a lot in Adobe Raw straight into Photoshop first thing I do is crop I apply filter if I'm going to use like um, denoise or something like that make a layer do any cloning that I want to do um, and then I apply uh, levels S curve um, and just color it up a bit with some saturation um, and hue and export and I'm done so hopefully um, that might help some of you out or you might tell me a easier way to the what I'm doing it now which I'd be more than happy to have a crack at so thanks for looking and uh, we'll see you again next time bye for now